I decided I wanted to be a musician when I was at school. Um, I was walking through the playground of my best mates and um, I decided I wanted to be the drummer in the band that we were setting up. Um, yeah, we went, we went on to form a band called Quiet Sane that did really well. We was really young and we was doing all the popular clubs in London. Um, we did a jazz cafe a lot. Um, we won the band of the year for a Capital Radio um, competition. And yeah, from then we just carried on. We did, we did well. That was where I learned. That was like my apprenticeship. No, I wasn't producing when I was in that band. Um, I think I started producing when I left Quiet Sane, just as I was leaving or as the band came to an end, that's when I started producing music. I never had any of my own gear at the time. Um, I was borrowing friend, my friend's gear all the time, like uh, Nicky's uh, Atari for weeks on end and his keyboard. Um, yeah, and that's how I really learned my skills as a producer. I didn't have a lot, but I had to make it work for me and I had to mix sounds to make them sound in a certain way. So yeah, it was a really good learning process. My first software was Cubase. I started that, that was on the Atari. Then um, I got a PC and then I changed to Logic. Um, and then I used all the Logic, so I went from, oh, what was it? I can't even remember what Logic it was called. But I, I ended up on Logic X and um, now I've changed completely and I use Studio One. I managed to get my own gear um, by getting a grant from the Princess Trust. That really helped me. I mean, I did a business plan and I sent it in and um, they sent it back and they said, look, you need to do a few things on this business plan um, to, get, to get the grant. And I kind of let it slide for a little while and then um, a friend of mine um, called Marcel, who I work with a lot now, um, came in and he helped me just sort out my business plan. And um, I, got the, I got the loan and I got the grant. It was part loan, part grant. So um, I did really well and I was able to pay back the loan. So I suppose it was a success. I was producing a lot of hip hop, um, mainly hip hop and R&B. Um, because basically I was that's what I was playing at the time on drums a lot of hip-hop and R&B and that's what I was listening to and that's what I still listen to um, yeah um, I think producing came naturally to me even though I was a drummer at the time because I, every time I was playing drums I was always thinking of productions and remixes in my head when I was playing playing the drums even when I was in the band we would start off the song in one way and then we would switch it to another way, another style or whatever. So I think production, I knew I was always going to go there in the end. Um, I saw a few record labels in the beginning because um, they heard some of my stuff and they liked it. But um, I mean, they used to always say to me, you know, we want that hit. And I used to be saying, well, what is a hit? And the only thing they could say to me was whatever was number one at the time. And I used to think to myself, well, what's the point of doing what, doing something that's already a hit? You know, and you need to put a spin on it. Otherwise you're just gonna be, it's just gonna be the same old thing. Now everybody's gonna say they've heard it before. So you've got to try and, I mean, I know you've got a copy to a certain extent, but then at the same time, you've got to put your own little flex on it. Do you know what I mean? The defining moment for me, I mean, even though I'd been doing production for a long time, is when I started working with Plan B. That's when um, I even got a chance to learn about and do writing, do you know what I mean? I mean, we would, like, the defamation of Strickland Banks, the way that worked, Ben would, would come in with these this amazing ideas, you know, he was, he was the guy that had the ideas. He would come in and say, I've got this song, and then we would get together as a band and we'd jam out this jam out the, the ideas he had. Um, maybe for, for in a few tweaks and stuff as, as we went along. But that's when I really, you know, had my proper experience of even like just writing with a band. 
you know, because normally I was used to being in the studio with maybe a bass player, they put their parts down, a guitarist, then he put their parts down. And work with, working with musicians more individually. And with Plan B, I've worked with a band. You know, that was my first experience of actually going in and working with a band. Um, they changed the way I work massively. Um, they work completely different as well, Plan B and Akala. They work quite differently. Obviously, they they both can rap, but they've, they they just sound completely different. Um, and even their music is different, like very different. So I I would learn. I would just pick up different things from each of them, and then work it into what I was doing. When I first started touring, it was the best thing ever. And, and I'm not saying that I don't like it now. I'm just saying it was all new. And when something's all new and you're going out, and my first um, experience of touring was with a headline act. He was, he was massive already. I was so lucky. And his name was Koziah Jones. And um, there was only three of us in the band. So just imagine that you've got the superstar Koziah Jones. You've got me on drums and um, it was Soul playing um, bass at the time. So it was like, you weren't, you, you weren't amongst this big massive band where you would get lost. You were free people, everybody knew who you were. So it was so exciting everywhere you went, people knew who you were. Um, I suppose you even got treated differently because Kaziah was such a, uh, and still is, he's a great musician and he's still a superstar. Um, you, I don't know, I'd never experienced that before, you know, even the fact of, about going on a tour bus, I never experienced that before and that was just exciting, sleeping on a tour bus, having your bed in a tour bus and having a, a like a lounge at the back of the tour bus where you would chill out and just have jokes. Um, it was it, it was loads of fun, it was loads of fun and, um, you know, when the time I'd, I went on tour with Plan B, I'd already done all of the things that everybody was going to be doing on 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 that run so I mean I wasn't bored of it because it was still fun and I was I was with different people so it was it was amazing and um but I had still experienced it before so I wasn't so like I suppose bedazzled by it you know um but then again uh, it was different and then going on 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 tour of Akala which was a much smaller setup it was just me and, and Kingsley that was brilliant I mean especially the first the first days that we started at the beginning of these things, because we'd be me and Kings, but then it would be LeVar, the engineer, and then it would be some of our mates that were, that, that came with us, Justin. Uh, it was just, it was, it was just loads of jokes, loads of fun, and loads of positive energy. When I was with Akala, I was, a, I was just around positive energy all the time. It changed the way I thought and everything. Working for Headline Acts was amazing. There was a there was a time where I was actually doing two at the same time, Plan B in the streets, and that was the highlight of my career, I think, um, because I would be on the main stage in one part of the festival and then being in the main tent on another. So I, when I did Glastonbury, I was on the main stage of Plan B, then I was in the big tent with the streets, and it was like, my adrenaline was just so high, you know, people was like, how can you do two shows? They're like really long shows, aren't you tired? I wasn't tired, I had even more energy. By the time I'd finished Ben's show and I had to go over and do um, the streets, I was so vibed up. It, the show was so good and like working with Mike Skinner is, is just so amazing. He's such a cool guy and everybody in that band was cool, everybody. It was, it was one of the easiest, easiest tours I've ever done you know and I and I had done it for a long time I think I was with Mike for about five six five six years um and he was a he was somebody I'd always wanted to work with I remember watching him when he first started on him on an MTV I think it was late and I saw this artist and I was like oh my gosh that 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 artist is great I wish I could work with him and then a few years down I was working with him I couldn't believe it as a matter of fact when he rang me I didn't even believe it was him and I remember saying, because I was on, I was in the recording studio with Akala at the time, and I got a phone call um, from a friend called Mick Shiner, 
and said, oh, Mike's looking for a new drummer. Um, how would you feel about being in his band? And I was like, yeah, of course. And then I didn't hear anything for ages. And then one day I got a phone call and a guy, it was a guy saying, oh, he was Mike Skinner. And I, was, I thought it was someone playing a joke. And um, I said to him, you know what? I'm not gonna come to audition with a row of drummers. When you, I was quite cheeky. I was like, when you have um, auditioned all them drummers and decided you don't want them, give me a call back. And that's when he turned around and said to me, no, no, I just want you to come in by yourself and, and um, just see, try you out. And then I realised it was him and I was like, oh gosh, I've definitely messed this up. Like, but then I went in, I went in for the audition and um, I did two songs. I played two songs and we went to the pub. And I never, I thought I'd got the gig and, then, and Mike told me that I had the gig after I did my first show with him um, in, um, I think it was the wireless festival and after i did the show he goes oh you've got the gig now and i was like oh my gosh i thought i had the gig <laughs> gutted but um yeah it, he he was a comedian anyway and it, yeah it was it was it was a really really good good gig to do and to do both plan b and him at the same time was amazing i mean ben was so patient like because there was some gigs i couldn't do for ben and he would allow me to get a uh, depth to do it and then i could go and do mike skinner so um and the reason I even got um, the Streets gig was because I had played with Plan B. You know, that's where he saw me and that's where a lot of people saw me. So I've got a lot to be thankful for playing in that band. So yeah, it's, it was just amazing. When I first got the Ivo Novella, I didn't actually know what it meant. <laughs> um, I mean, we got it for, uh, I think it was, um, she said, um, I think it was the best selling single or the most played single, one of the two, I can't remember. Um, and I think I only started realizing what it was when everybody kept on telling me. And then um, when I told people that I had this award, everybody used to treat me differently. Do you know what I mean? And and the Ivo, this, it just opened up so many doors that I would have never been able to go through. So um, I feel really blessed to have won it. You know, it was it's a great honour. When I say I teach, I, I work together, or well, I work with a, a good friend of mine called Marcel, who runs a, a company called the Base History Arts. Um, and basically, I started off doing workshops with him. Um, and we used to go around to all these different schools around the country doing rhythm workshops. And... Um, that really was new to me. It was terrifying actually, because I had to, all of a sudden I was in front of these kids that you had to impress, you know, and I wasn't, my communica communication skills weren't that great at the time. And after doing that, I was much more experienced, you know what I mean? Um, so um, yeah, and now I still do it. Like I've been, I've been, I go to Hong Kong like almost every year now, um, working with, different kids um, and I basically go as a guest teacher with Marcel um, and I go there and I do these workshops where we like put them into bands and they have to write a cover they have to write their own song and then they have to learn a cover and then they do a whole show at the end of the whole project um, and then basically you know I go there and they just ask me about my career and what's like what it's like to be on tour and what it's like to be in a studio and they ask me loads of questions and I find that I really like doing that. It's like you're giving something back um, to to the younger generation. So, yeah, I suppose I can say I, 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 I'm not a teacher because teaching is is a hard job. Like I do stuff the kids like. If you're doing English or maths, that's when you're a teacher. Do you know what I mean? Geography or any of them kind of subjects. Or you have to be with the kids from the beginning till the end of the day for years. That's teaching. You know, what I do is more like going in and have fun. I'm really excited about this new um, arts development um, scheme I'm doing. Um, it's called In The Making and um, I'm basically going to be getting new young unsigned artists and working with them um, and finding out how, what kind of style they want to do, creating a style with them 
writing of them and then producing for them. But then once we've done that and, or whilst we're doing that, I've got a, a whole marketing team working on their online presence um, and anything to do with marketing, marketing their EP, sorting out their image, their branding, we all sit together and we do all that. So, I mean, because my thing, when, when I first started, I could do the music, but I never could take it any further because I didn't know how to. But I'm much more experienced now and I'm working with more experienced people. So we, it, I just wanted to do something where I could basically maybe allow a few younger artists to skip the hurdles, not have to go through all the learning process that I had to go, to, go through, you know, um, and then just show them the easier route and show them that they don't have to be signed. You know, I'm not saying being signed is bad, but then at the same time, it's not the only way to be successful as a musician, as an artist. And I think um, also um, musicians, there's a lot of poor musicians out there. And I think it's because they don't think of themselves as a business. And I mean, I'm guilty of it as well. When I first started, it was just about oh, doing the gigs and, you know, never even thought about how to make money or where I was going to make my money. I was young, I could take them them kind of chances. But as you get older, you can't do that stuff. You know what I mean? And you have to start, you know, if you want to survive in the music industry, you have to think about music as a business. You know, if you're not touring, then what are you going to do if you're not touring? Do a bit of teaching. If you're not teaching, what are you going to do? Do production. If you're not producing, what are you going to do? Do some co-writing. You know, there's loads of areas within the music that you can just jump backwards and forward to. You know, and that's how I survived in this game. Do you know what I mean? Just by doing that. And also, I don't get bored. If I was just touring all the time, I'd be bored. You know what I mean? I had to mix it up to, to, to enjoy it more. At the moment, I'm mainly working with Addy Silliman, Daisy Day, um, Charlie Bowdery, and another artist called Josh Barry and a rapper who's going to be amazing called Deacon. Um, I've been working with them guys. Um, and as I said, there are a lot of them are new artists and I think I just love working with new artists because they, they've got so many fresh ideas. Not that I don't like working because I've worked with signed artists as well and that's just great, but it's different. Um, I'm working with Dion um, Broomfield, who's just amazing as well. Um, yeah, and then there's a few other people that are coming through as well. Hi, I'm Casella Beatmaker. Thank you for all your questions via Twitter. If you want to check me out on what I'm doing, go to my website, www.thebeatmakers.com or go to my socials, which are down here. Um, and don't forget to check out my new artist development scheme in the making. The person of the beat space down radio fall in the sky space out oh lord oh, oh lord oh yeah the scars on my skin praise down alive and living praise out